Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1805. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in Woodbury, Connecticut, with a very special guest by the name of Alexis Ketchai. Alexis, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have it in gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? I am ready to go, Mark. All right, we'll have some fun. Now, before I give you a proper introduction, what's one little thing that most people don't know about you, Alexis? I would say that most people don't know how much of a history buff I am because I, uh, I teach biblical history. I read on 12th century France and I, you know, actively studying the Constitution with my 78 year old dad. So, you know, I'm very into history and, and uh, actively pursue it. So that would say most people don't know that. This is very cool. Uh, you know, I, I find it fascinating. And what's that great saying about history? If you don't study, you're doomed to repeat it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, and here we are. <laughs> and here we are. Holy cow. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I find it fascinating. And I, I remember in high school and some college, history never really seemed that interesting to me because they glaze over mm. so much and it, it's all powder puffed. And now they probably teach history differently. I don't know. But I remember I had a U.S. history teacher in college that for the first time, I got enthralled with history, and he taught it in a way that I never learned it before. He kind of pulled back the curtains and taught real history, and we would have these wonderful conversations. I would think, here, I'm in college now with a bunch of adults, and we're <laughs> talking intellectually about things that I had no idea had happened with U.S. history. So, Yeah. Well, we find that you know, you're very much engaged with it. You know, So as our kids were coming up through school and in high school, if they were studying the Civil War, we watched Ken Burns' Civil War series with them. If, if they were um, on you know, World War II, we went and got Winds of War so they could watch it. And so if you engage like that at yes. home with your kids, then you talk about it. And, you know, my son will tell you that, you know, McClellan was the worst general of the Civil War and can tell you why. And, and he's a total sports, basketball, uh, tennis person. You wouldn't expect him to start commenting on the Civil War, but it's because we really engage with it. And it, it actually is something incredibly interesting. So, well, you have some lucky children for sure. And most people go, McClellan, who's that? Never heard of yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, look at <laughs> wow. Fortunate children you have. Well, very cool. Well, let's dive into your world here. Alexis Ketchai, and I'm going to spell it for you because it's a very unique last name. C-H-A-C-C-H-I-A is the Vice President of Operations at Premier Financial Services, which is one of the nation's leading finance companies specializing in exotic, vintage, and luxury cars. We love all the all of the above. She grew up in Carmel, New York, helping her family's industrial tool supply company counting screws into boxes at the young age of five and teaching contractors how to operate hydraulic drill presses at the age <laughs> of 10. I had to use a step stool for that. Well, that's okay. Probably safer <laughs> to do that anyway. Alexis held managerial positions in retail companies before joining Premier some 21 years ago, where she started as a part-time receptionist and has grown into running nearly every aspect of that wonderful company. You'll remember their CEO, Mitch Katz, was guest number 1013 back in April of 2018. Back in 1997, he transformed the leasing industry with the introduction of the simple lease and early termination program. This allows the exotic and luxury car consumers to pay off their trade of their vehicles at any time, providing flexibility and financing and tax benefits of leasing. Very cool. We'll be back in just a minute to talk with Alexis Moore. But first, a word from our valued sponsors. They make this show possible. So give them a little love. We'll be right back. Are you ready to get out and hit the road? Boy, I sure am. This country has so much to offer. And what better way than to get out and drive? Covercraft protects the things that move you. From protective covers for the outside of your vehicles to the inside with dash covers, seat covers, and sunscreens. All creatively designed to keep your vehicle cool for those roadside stops for a meal or to take in the view. Covercraft custom tailors their designs for your special vehicles. And manufacturers with the quality and attention to detail that's been their standard since 1965. Road trips can be hard on your vehicle surfaces, so protect them. And when you get home, cleanup is fast and easy. 
and you want to get a deal? Well, I've got one just for you. Use the code YA21 at Covercraft.com and you'll get 10% off your Covercraft order. That's right, 10% off compliments of cars, yeah. Simply use the code YEAH21, yeah, 21, at checkout. I've been protecting my vehicles with Covercraft covers since 1975. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. Go to Covercraft.com today. I was talking with a buddy of mine the other day and he asked me about American Collectors Insurance. He said, while I listen to you on Cars Yeah, you're always talking about agreed value collector car insurance. Well, I insure all my cars on my regular auto insurance policy and I've done it for years. Why use a different company for my collector cars? I get a multi-car discount. Isn't that good enough? I suggested he call his carrier and ask how much he would get if his collector car was totaled are stolen. He called back and said, boy, that was a scary conversation. Their value of my car wasn't even close to what it's really worth. Thank you for the education, Mark. So don't just hope for a fair claim settlement. Be certain and know exactly what you receive with an agreed value policy. American Collectors Insurance has been protecting enthusiasts since 1976. Give them a call today for your personal agreed value quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866 866- 224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of Mark Green's at Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance, classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors, automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. They're the ones that insure my car. That's American Collectors Insurance. All right, Alexis, we are back. So let's dive a little deeper into the corner here. I want you to talk more about the business you're in because it's a fascinating segment of how we can get our hands on collector cars and exotics and all sorts of things. I've known about your company forever. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires spinning a little bit here. So Alexis, grab the wheel. All right, then. So, you know, here at Premier, we love helping customers, you know, get into the iconic dream car that's always been what they've been pursuing. And so that's something that we really work at. And I really work on the inner workings um, here at Premier. So one of the great things about Premier is that you get to make a difference every day. And I, I think that opportunity that Mitch uh, provided to me very early on when I started with Premier in 2000 was to make a difference. And that was whether it was in the role for employees or for customers or for dealers, you know, and, and that opportunity included everything from going to some events. You know, I've been to auctions at the Waldorf and I've uh, traveled to visit some dealers, uh, you know, whether in Chicago and North Carolina and Atlanta. But those are all sort of in the past because I really fell into developing Premier's internal systems. Mm. And so um, starting with policy and procedure, um, spearheading our compliance and then actually building our database system uh, right after I started with Premier. I was sitting with Doug Ewing, who was our VP of sales now, but at the time he was our Northeast sales manager, and he had only been with the company about eight months. And I sit down with him, and he puts this box in front of me that says FileMaker Pro and asks if I can build a database. And I said, FileMaker Pro, wow. And I said, yes, I can. I said, I can build anything. So I took the box, took the plastic off and I started. And so, you know, we have an entirely proprietary system built in FileMaker, uh, which is incredibly integrated. And that's something I'm very proud of here. And it's really an amazing product that we've built. It does everything from being our CRM and managing our relationships to um, allowing us to produce single document leases that can be emailed to anywhere in the country and then signed automatically through DocuSign and then stored in eOriginal. We can do same day approval, same day funding for our customers if they can get that car insured fast enough. That's always the clincher. You know, and so that's a lot of what I helped to build at Premier. And, you know, in that process, we built up employees as well. I found that, and I'll talk, you know, you get to make a real difference in people's lives when you help them grow. And so while it's great and fun to help somebody take delivery of that, you know, vintage Ferrari or that, you know, multi-million dollar car that's coming in from overseas, that is a lot of fun. But while you do that, the coworkers and the colleagues that I have really became leasing professionals. And so, uh, you know, to help them grow and to understand, you know, our industry was really rewarding and has been rewarding because it's really very unique. I I remember years ago through the NVLA, so that's the National Vehicle Leasing Association, I think it was the year 2006 or 2000, yeah, 2006 or 2007, I got my certification as a vehicle leasing executive. And it didn't seem to to mean much uh, at the time, but as we've gone through, I realize how much I can help teach others in our industry. And then, you know, as a result, we can deliver out to our clients the ability to get them into the car of that car of their dreams. And that car can be, you know, a car that they buy at auction. That can be a car that they buy through a private party purchase. It can be a car that they are, you know, purchasing from a dealer. And, you know, we just make that possible 
you know, by being experts in our field. So, yeah. so that's wow. a lot of what I do at Premier. I also, I also handle all the marketing at Premier. I do have some staff that support me with that. And it began way back in the day with print, you know, magazines and oh, yeah. uh, just, you know, sponsoring events. But now it's really grassroots and a lot of social media and writing our own posts. We have blog posts that go up, you know, every week. I work with a variety of writers. I help to develop our website design and development. And of course, at this point, being here 21 years, I've done that a couple of times when we've had new ones. And one of the other things we're super proud of is, you know, we have online quoting. So any of our dealers that work with us can have access to our systems and uh, log on and get a real-time quote that's, you know, accurate and they're going to be able to deliver a car on. And so that's something that while there are some quoting modules out there in the industry, you know, Premier stands by, you know, the valuation and the the manner in which that works. So, wow. so you know, there's a lot of, a lot of things I've done. I've had my hand everywhere because... Mitch, let me make a difference. You know, it sounds like Premier is the Hotel California. You check in, but you never <laughs> check out. You know? <laughs> and uh, it, it's really interesting to me. Now, you've been there so long, and other people have too uh, that work there. When mm. you think about all the different hats you've worn, I always joke that I have no hair left because I wore so many hats in the last company I worked with. So be yeah. careful because you would look, yeah, right. you'd look funny if you look like me. What are some of the favorite parts of this multifaceted career you've had with Premier? The favorite parts for you? Favorite parts for me are, you know, training new staff. Mm -hmm. I find that incredibly exciting. Just this morning, I was on the phone and we're having one of our busiest months ever. We're gonna, probably going to break every record we've ever had before wow. this month. Um, and so, which is amazing. But we, you know, I had an employee this morning tell me how excited she was to open up her computer and check all the emails and see how many applications she had to process. And so, you know, dealing with that enthusiasm and linking it to the to the end goal. There's a lot of satisfaction in working with financing vehicles like of this caliber because, you know, when you get the application, that person's really seeking to to take that, you know, automotive engineering excellence and, you know, take that delivery. And, but then we make it happen. You know, we make, we initiate that wire or we send that check and then that customer takes that delivery. And so you have a lot of success points in our job because they don't just become a, a customer who buys one thing. It's a story behind it. And they're so excited and, and just being a part of that becomes very contagious. And so the staff, you know, training the staff to really service the client and think of what's best for the client. And that that's the best we can do, right? Because that'll drive more business. It's super encouraging as opposed to, um, you know, another business that might not have a lot of interaction with the end user. So right. it's really, um, I think that's super exciting to be uh, doing that. And otherwise, I think I would say being able to be innovative here at Premier is it really what makes a difference for me. Um, it's the favorite part that, you know, somebody has a challenge and we say, let's let's figure that out, not bring a consultant in or, oh, well, we'll just work around it. You know, we, we try to, you know, innovate a, a response to that. And that's the great thing about the database system that we work in because we can build those solutions, which is Fantastic. Well, you think about what you're doing. You're really providing a possibility for dreams. Nobody mm -hmm. really needs these vehicles. Well, maybe <laughs> us car nuts think we need them. But as my mom used to say, uh, you want it, you don't need it. When I would say, oh, but I need that yeah. new bicycle, mom. Well, <laughs> and then I'd say, well, I want what I need and I need what I want. And then I get sent to my room. So that was yeah. part of the deal. Well, let's talk a little bit about mentors and driving inspirations. I would assume you've had some pretty key mentors in your life or maybe individual who's been very influential and helped guide you down the many paths that you've gone down? Who would that be? That's really interesting. You know, I would say that, well, my dad, right? So my dad was one of those people who would who would say to you, uh, suffering builds character. <laughs> he also is the type of guy that when you came home with the 95 on the test, he would say what happened to the other five points. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, my father really believed that I could do anything I tried to do. And so I think that that made a huge difference. And, and no matter which direction I went, because I worked for several different companies in retail management, he you know, there was never a question of what I was doing. It was what could I accomplish while I was there. And so, you know, constant encouragement to take myself seriously, see myself as a as a business person, as a leader, as somebody who could make a difference. He's the one who told me when I was, you know, I, you know a young mother and I needed to uh, not work 70 hours a week anymore because I'm one of those people that if the store was open, I kept working. Mm -hmm. So uh, I said I needed to look for a job. but had to be closer to home. And he said, well, print 100 resumes and go knock on doors. And this is 20 years ago. And 20 years ago, people weren't doing this anymore. You know, they weren't knocking on doors. And he really was, um, he was really fairly insistent. And I did that. I went and I knocked on doors all the way uh, in the two or three towns surrounding the town where I live. And I slid my resume under the door at Premier. And um, <laughs> that's because my father said, you might as well try, you know. And so that I had an interview. I talked about milk and coffee, um, milk and coffee and shoes in my interview. Somehow I got the job as this part-time receptionist. And, you know, a year and a half later, I was full-time and building databases and, you yeah. know, figuring out compliance and policy and procedures. So my dad was really 
really influential and really believing in me. But a mentor outside of family, because everybody wants to say their dad, a mentor outside of that would be somebody named Dick Smith, who's no longer with us. He's passed away. And he was the uh, franchisor of um, Successories here in Connecticut. And when I started with Dick Smith, I was managing one store for him in Danbury, Connecticut. And by the time I was done, I was managing three locations for him. And I was really like a, a regional manager. And, you know, he said to me, he also really believed that I could really do anything. He let me manage that store the way I thought we should manage it. We brought in new departments that effectively, you know, brought national changes to the chain overall. Wow. But he would tell me when I would sit there planning everything, because a lot of our clients were corporate clients like IBM and Pitney Bowes and Georgia Pacific. And I'd sit down, I have all these plans and he would say, stop planning and start doing. <laughs> and he was right, right. And so that's the thing, you sort of have to get to work and, and, you know, but he also allowed me to contribute and he encouraged me to learn everything. I could learn. And, and so people like that, whether it be my dad or, or Dick Smith or Mitch Katz here at Premier, you know, that encouragement to to make a difference and to innovate and to contribute, you know, that is an incredible motivator and, you know, helps somebody be really effective. So wow. those would be my mentors. Very nice. Now, if you were going to be a mentor and advise a young person, perhaps, or anyone to get into the type of career you've chosen, what would that be? What would that advice be to them? to do everything, to do every task that you can do. One of the things is you really want to learn things from the bottom up and that nothing is beneath you. Uh, I remember uh, during the downturn in the economy here at Premier, which was probably one of the most difficult times I've ever had, we cut back on staff. And I remember talking about, you know, who's going to process this, who's going to process that when you had sufficiently, significantly low uh, employees, lower number of employees to process everything. And and the one thing that nobody wanted to process, I I just looked at them all and I said, I'll do it. Um, and it didn't matter that I was, you know, in a VP position. And, and, you know, when it comes to answering the phones, if you just answer the phones, you know, that's what I'll do. And I find it incredibly rewarding. And I think people respect you for it. They appreciate you for it because that's the task that either they couldn't get to or, or didn't feel they had the time for. But I think also it just gets you exposure to every angle of the business. So my advice would be to do everything and work from the bottom up and learn the company inside and out, um, not just your one task or your one job. And by doing that overall, you become much more successful. Oh, it's a wonderful value bomb you dropped for us there, not to become siloed into what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, spectacular. Let's take a short break and thank our sponsors. We come back. I want to talk about a big challenge. You touched on one there with the downturn and having to downsize the business, but still all the work had to get done. So keep the seatbelts on. We'll be right back with Alexis. What began as a charitable car show has grown into the world's greatest collector car auctions raising over $133 million for charitable organizations to date. For nearly 50 years, automotive enthusiasts from all over the world have enjoyed the Barrett-Jackson Collector Car Auctions, and I'm a huge fan. Regarded as the barometer of the collector car industry, their auctions are world-class lifestyle events, where thousands of the world's most sought-after unique and valuable automobiles cross the block in front of a global audience, in person, on TV, or streamed online. Barrett Jackson produces the world's greatest collector car auctions in Scottsdale, Arizona, Palm Beach, Florida, Las Vegas, Nevada, and new for 2021, Houston, Texas. The excitement of Barrett Jackson auctions is contagious, and a unique experience is not to be missed. And coming soon, something new for you Cars Yeah listeners, I'll be teaming up with Craig Jackson on the first ever Barrett Jackson podcast, coming to your mobile devices every week. Listen here on Cars Yeah and check out the Barrett Jackson website for unique details on this new exciting podcast that I'm very proud to be a part of. And be sure to visit BarrettJackson.com today. Barrett Jackson, the world's greatest collector car auctions. Today's vehicles are essentially computers on wheels, and it takes more than a wrench and oil to keep them humming. That's why Cars Yeah! supports TechForce Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to driving tomorrow's workforce of skilled technicians forward. Techs keep our cars, trucks, airplanes, and fleets rolling. Yet there's a massive tech shortage because many young people don't know it's no longer a blue-collar job. Today, it's a new-collar career. It involves computers, technology, it's in high demand, you get paid really well, and you can live and work anywhere in the country. I know you're passionate about cars, trucks, and motorcycles, and you can help pass that passion on to the next generation of techs so our rides keep rolling down the road. Visit techforce.org today and learn how. All right, Alexis, I'd love for you to get 
under the hood, get a little dirty maybe, and talk about a big obstacle, a big challenge, even a big failure that you face. The most important part of this is how did you overcome it? And how did that experience help you gain even more momentum in your career and your business? That's really great, you know, and and I did just touch on it when I talked about, you know, the downturn in 2008, you know, that great recession, 2008, 2009. I'd say the hardest day of my life was letting go eight colleagues at one time. Mm. And, uh, you know, really sitting there and not just saying goodbye, but being in the room when you when you let them go. And, and then that happened again a couple months later, we did another segment and, and effectively we were brought down to about one third of our overall staffing that we had been. And we had to all do everything. So like I said, you know, I w- went back to the front desk and answering the phones and, and so other people could get their job done. And you did not have work to do. You certainly uh, still had plenty of work to do. But I believe it really... It created the foundational strength that Premier has today, even beyond my own strength, right? You know, getting through that because, you know, as my father said, uh, suffering builds character. Yes. We really engaged, you know, certain staff that are still here became real pillars in our company, you know, sort of foundational pillars of strength. You know, whether uh, Gina Gridzian, who's our asset management coordinator, Uh, Suzanne DeBerry, who's now operations uh, manager and she handles IT. These people were just assistants at the time and they were just willing to do whatever it took. Doug Ewing, who's our VP of sales and myself as VP of ops, but also Lisa James, who is our risk manager now. You know, she was really there in the thick of it when at the time, you know, the people who handled our delinquencies left because they thought it was a sinking ship. And, you know, here we are on the other side, stronger than ever, you know, and also our controller who was with us. So, So those people who came through that we're really the foundational pillars of this company. And so that incredibly difficult time of overall, the company, you know, was able to survive and um, support those families that that did stay on. And then, of course, now we're, we're up to 35 employees, you know, so what didn't kill us made us stronger for sure. Oh. It taught us, you know, taught us resilience. We had to rely upon one another. And I would say that it made us ready. I mean, we've had everything here from, you wouldn't think it's Connecticut, but we've had hurricanes and tornadoes that have literally <laughs> shut us down in the office. I mean, at one point we had to pack up and we put all the employees in Mitch's house. So people were in like their playroom and their dining. Wow. Room. And we were all there. And then and then we had the tornado a couple of years ago where nobody around here had power. So we picked up everybody came to the office, got their computers, and we moved over to like a common workspace and just, you know, reset the service. And, and I think we could do that because we had this sort of core team of eight people who just knew all the ins and outs and a staff that was just, you know, really dedicated. Yeah. And of course that prepped us for COVID. Yeah, you know, yeah. Wow. You can achieve great things together is is what you can do. So wonderful stories. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about a bucket list because uh, it sounds to me like uh, you set goals, you achieve goals, you've always got goals set. So what would you still like to accomplish in your business and or your life? Well, if you're talking about the bucket list, I really would like to go to Monterey Car Week. Jeez. Well, I could help you with that. Yeah, but they never let me go. Well, they never let you go. Well, I'm going to give Mitch a call. You know, (laughs) last year would have been my 31st year in a row attending that event. Of course, COVID killed that whole deal. So I just booked my, my flights and everything for this year, thinking positively. Although, my regular listeners know this, my daughter went and got pregnant. That's okay because she's been married a long time and she's been dating the same guy for even longer. So nothing crazy like that. But the first thing she said to me after dad, I'm going to have a baby. You're going to be a grandpa for the first time is baby's due August 9th. That's the Uh, first day of car week. Yeah. I just said, well, you're going to have to hold off. So (laughs) Or have it early. Have it early. Well, one of the two. So, you know, we'll see what happens here. But so car, uh, you got to go. I mean, and if it, I do, I have yeah, to go. I mean, yeah. some of these people I've been working with for 20 years, you know, whether it's Vu Wen at Porsche Motor Works oh, or, yeah. <laughs> or Frank at the Carmel Mission Classic or oh, Teresa wow. at Carmel on the Avenue, you know, I, I talk to these people for 20 years. I've been talking to these people and I've yeah. never been, but, you know, there's got to be somebody who holds down the fort and make sure that we pay for those cars. Well, so I think it's I, tricky. I think I, I got to call Mitch here. I'm going to do everything I can to twist his arm, but you definitely got to go. And, and when you get to go, call me. Because I've done it so many times, there is a trick to that week that you have. I believe it. It's very <laughs> hard to do all of that in one. You can't really do it all, but you can do a lot if you manage yeah. it properly. But I, 
I wish nothing more for you than to attend Car Week because it's it's insane. It's it's crazy and and uh, you know cross our fingers everything goes smoothly and everything happens this year. Definitely worth going. So yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. Keep it keep it on the <laughs> list. And all those folks you mentioned are past guests here on Cars. Yeah. So uh, you're in good hands. There'll be plenty of. In fact, somebody told me years ago I should have a Cars Yeah alumni party during Car Week. Oh, that's what a great idea. I don't know if I can afford a party that big. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of people here that you know you're guest number 1805. That would be one heck of right. a party, but it sounds it pretty, would be. sounds pretty cool. Now let's talk about a special vehicle in your life. Now I know when I originally uh, you were recommended, and I want to do a shout out here to a mutual friend Gordon Andrew who suggested mm-hmm. you be on the show. He is a Cars Yeah listener and also a guy who started a podcast called. Golf, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I helped him get that whole thing going, which is pretty darn cool. It's a wonderful podcast if you love a chasing a little white ball around the grass versus fancy cars on the lawn at Pebble Beach. <laughs> so, but at any rate, I want, you know, you first said, well, I'm not really a car gal. And I went, ah, I don't believe that for one second. So <laughs> is there a special vehicle in your life or maybe a special vehicle you aspire to have? Oh, well, that's interesting. You know, it's, it's, I, I'll talk about a special a vehicle that I had in my life, but okay. aspire to have, I would love to have, you know, some uh, Talbot Lago, but I would need some mechanic to go along with it probably. <laughs> yeah, so, but, just, um, just a little uh, one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, the special car, I would say, you know, everybody sort of has their first car, mm-hmm. you know, that, yeah. that sticks with them. So my first car was a black Volkswagen diesel rabbit, and it was a standard. Okay. I think my cousin sold it to me for a hundred bucks. And, um, and that car got me everywhere. You know, I'd fill the tank for $8 and it got me, you know, back and forth to college. Yep. No problem for all week. And that was kind of far, you know, it was maybe, you know, 20 miles or whatever. I drove all over the place. So I I drove it into New York city. I had friends who were terrified to drive into New York city and I would just, you know, drive us in there. I don't know. You're not from around here, but if the Sawmill Parkway or the West Side Highway, you know, just, you know, can scare the scare <laughs> the heck out of people. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Absolutely. The thing about that car that was fun is that at the time I had a boyfriend who worked for Ron Barnaba. So Ron Barnaba Motorsports, uh, he had a had a shop in Danbury, Connecticut, and he used to work on classic and vintage Porsches uh, for people yeah. like Paul Newman. Yep. And so this boyfriend of mine would be, you know, because he was just a grunt. So he would just be sent off to the junkyards all over Connecticut and New York State to find these parts, you know, because he'd hear about some 911 sitting in a junk yard and you know 25 50 100 miles away so we would drive over in my volkswagen rabbit and um you know pick up these parts i mean we're digging through you know um digging through these junkyards and everything so it was quite the experience but part of his job they would end up with these old porsche parts so over the years my volkswagen rabbit had a porsche stick shift Mm -hmm. it had a porsche stereo it had like um (laughs) all these all this porsche paraphernalia inside (laughs) And it was like being tossed. Oh, it was dented. They had to get rid of it, you know. Yeah. So suddenly, you know, my my car had that. So that, you know, that was a lot of fun. There was times when uh, I drove behind them when they were delivering uh, one of Paul Newman's, you know, cars to his house. And so I would, you know, drive behind and then my boyfriend and I would drive off in the in the rabbit. So I just, I think that that's, um, you know, an interesting one. And I, I certainly drove it to death for sure. A little puff of smoke in the rearview mirror for sure. You know, I saw bring a trailer not too long ago, a 80s rabbit cabrio sold for seventy thousand dollars yeah now it had very low miles so it was one of those you know time capsule cars i I still don't quite know why anybody would want that but i guess relive their youth i think back to the 80s i was living in del mar and every young high school girl was driving a vw rabbit cabrio in those days yeah yours was a coupe i would assume mine was a coupe but mine was from like the 70s late that, 70s yeah. I remember okay. what year and I, and I just you know it was my cousin gave it to me for 100 bucks I mean yeah. it was hey, you know what a deal <laughs> but it was beat for sure yeah but it had Porsche parts so you know and it had the best yeah. stereo I've ever had in a car yeah it could sell it for more than 100 bucks you made money on that deal I'm sure so yeah, <laughs> there so. you go well I'm gonna crawl in your head a little bit here Alexis if you woke up tomorrow and you were manifest as a vehicle what would you be but more importantly why and this isn't what you want to be this is how you perceive your grit your tenacity your persistence uh, the kind of person you are in a vehicle that's funny that's you know my husband always uses uh the word pragmatic for me okay and and i have a I, my sister-in-law says i'm triple earth she's very into all of those <laughs> things so i'm triple earth which i'm about as grounded as you could get i probably would be like a volvo wagon but an older one. <laughs> I got. I under. I could see that with those. Yeah, those descriptions. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, it would be very useful and utilitarian. 
it would be very reliable. I could fix it myself okay. if I needed to. It still would look good, and, and Volvos are incredibly comfortable and, and you know, just go forever. So yeah. I probably would be a Volvo. <laughs> okay. I like it. That makes sense. Hunter, triple, triple earth, go. grounded, pragmatic. Yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah. I like it. Now, I found that most, if not all, successful people are all about giving back and helping others. So what are some of the ways that you've found uh, that are rewarding for you to help others in the automotive sector? So in the automotive sector, I, you know, I talked a little bit before about developing staff. You know, I think that, you know, we have a whole program here at Premier that that I've worked to spearhead about for professional development and uh, to help people grow into being leasing professionals. And, you know, sometimes you have people that are coming in, like myself, who had worked years in some other industry and have no idea about cars Mm -hmm. or finance. Um, Sometimes we have people right out of school and they don't see themselves as professionals. You know, they, they, they don't even know really what they see their their jobs as. And, and when you can help people, you know, build them up, help them see themselves as somebody with a career, you know, it turns them into it, it turns them into something greater than they ever imagined. And, and of course, as a result, that brings success for the company. But but it really builds them up. And I, I'm just so you know, when, when I've, I've had a few people that have left us, unfortunately, um, one who moved to Atlanta, we've had um, one who she ended up going and, and working with AmeriCorps. And these people at times have, have written me letters about how the success of the success that they're facing where they are now is, is because of the experience that wow, they had, how nice. you know, at Premier. And when you get those letters, they're like the best thing ever, like forget keeping birthday cards. I mean, these letters are just, you know, really tremendous and, and so valuable. But you know, Mark, my real passion for helping others is in feeding the hungry. Every weekend, I coordinate a program called Sandwich Saturday, and we make about 100 sandwiches for a local homeless shelter. And that's uh, St. Vincent de Paul in Waterbury. That shelter has 160 beds, and every week, it's more than 50% filled with people under 16 years old. And so, you know, making those sandwiches every week so those people don't have to wonder about where their food's coming from. So maybe they can work on getting a job or take some time to make a phone call to connect with a family member. To me, you know, feeding the hungry is is incredibly uh, rewarding. So wow. that's really where I think, you know, personally that I give back, but I, I really do, um, you know, helping, pe- helping people build themselves up. That's what I like doing. You know, and it's such a simple thing. We do that, my wife, Jill and I, with our local food bank that help families in the area that need help. And especially this year with COVID and challenges mm-hmm. of people losing jobs and so forth. And it's a, such a simple, easy thing to do. And even if you don't have the wonderful nature that Alexis has to make sandwiches, You go grocery shopping, pick up an extra bag of things or just drop Mm -hmm. a check off every month to a local food bank to help people in your area. It's so simple. It's very easy. And as I learned from, uh, you know, the great promotional speaker, Tony Robbins, who's now Gosh, he's he's got a feeding program where they've fed over half a billion people uh, food. It's a tremendous what he's done. Mm. Yeah, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Is that uh, it's the first step in getting somebody back on their feet and helping them. And right. It came from him of living in a house where they didn't know where their next meal was coming up from a long time. His father was yeah. gone. His mother was uh, alcoholic and it was just chaotic, crazy life. It's just simply feeding people. So my hat's off to you. Yeah. Uh, and no doubt you're handing that wonderful tradition down to your kids too, I would assume. Oh, it's really, uh, well, you know, you make two good points there. One, it's that hierarchy of needs, you know, so if somebody can't think about, they can't think of their brain is hungry, you know, they can't right. do that. But but for my kids, you know, we get the we get the supplies, we make the sandwiches, my daughter helps me make the sandwiches, and then my son, who's now 17, takes the sandwiches and he drives them to the shelter. And, you know, mm-hmm. to have kids that aren't afraid to not walk up and knock on the door of the shelter and hand that if, you know, just that ability to, to look people in need in the face and, and be ready to help them. That's that's a one of the big things that people have to get over in this this world, you know, not to be afraid of that. What you're doing is fantastic. So again, kudos, kudos. My son, when he, you know, what we used to do, we go down to New York City a lot, and my son's been to Washington D.C. a couple times. We put in our wallet, you know, five or ten five dollar gift cards to McDonald's. And if you see somebody in need on the street, it's always afraid to give them money because you don't know where it's going. But if you give right. them a gift card to McDonald's, they right. get some food. At least they get some. And yeah, and it's not used for drugs or something like that. So right. yeah, uh, tremendous. I love it. Now, is there a book that you've read that you'd like to share? You think that others would glean some value from? So I'm a diehard Stephen Covey fan. Seven <laughs> okay. Habits of Highly Effective oh, People yeah. are just surprised, right? <laughs> yeah, I love him too. Yeah. So um, no, I think that Covey is. We actually base some of our professional development here at, at Premier on Seven Habits. You know, 
the idea of helping people work on themselves, you know, understand like the real benefits of proactivity. I think that that's really, you know, hypercritical. So seven habits takes you through, you know, focus on the self. So, so you can participate in, you know, being really effective and then it helps you how to recognize your own impact and relationships and how to really accomplish all of those things. And so well beyond to-do lists and well beyond, you know, be nice um, or, you know, a smile is the first impression. You know, Covey takes you much deeper yeah. uh, than that to see bigger pictures and respecting others' objectives and goals. And I just think that, um, you know, that Covey's Seven Habits is really, uh, really just like a great instruction for life. You know, it's a true self-help book, but even though it seems like it's a business book, um, but I think, over, and overall at the end, you know, it talks about renewal and how to keep a balance in your life, you know, because ultimately to have that success, if you don't have the balance between personal and relationships and it sort of all comes together through that. And so I, I think that Seven Habits is a classic read and I, 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 there's all sorts of supporting materials you can watch online that go with it and videos. And it's just really a tremendous uh, program that if you read it a couple different times over different stages of your life, we will really bring tremendous benefit. Mine's a bit dog-eared. I picked it up over the many, many years, gave my kids copies when they went off to college. And yeah. I, I paraphrase one of my favorites, and that is first listen to understand and speak to be understood. Oh, and that's my favorite. Is it? That Mine is too, favorite. by far. Yeah. Yeah. It's something to live by. I think that, you know, when we have these meetings at Premier, so when we have team meetings, the first thing we do in our team meetings is we talk about the golden rule. Like, what does, mm. that, what does that mean for everybody? Because mm -hmm. you think the golden rule is treat others like you want to be treated, right? But not everybody sees the golden rule that well. People have different definitions of what's the most important thing. And so we always, this is every time our managers meet, we go around the room and we remind ourselves, the team, you know, what's most important. And, and everybody has a different aspect, but mine always is, I hope that we seek first to understand before we try to make ourselves understood. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. Super important. It really is. Yeah. I love it. I'm, I'm happy you mentioned that book. I'll remind our listeners there's a great place on the Cars yeah website called Guest Recommended Books. It's under the resources tab on the landing page where you'll find this book and over 1,800, probably over 18 or 50 books there listed right now. Hmm. Tremendous library of all sorts of books from automotive books to self-help to business books and of course, this great book as well. You'll find it on the Cars yeah website and you'll find a link to this book. You really should get yourself a copy if you've never read it on Alexis's show notes page. So just type Alexis into the search bar and that page will pop right up. One more quick break for our sponsors here. We come back. I'm going to take you on the ultimate drive. So sit tight. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay. I've discovered Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual, informed, reasoned opinion based on firsthand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. Join Linkage. Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. And don't forget to use the code CARSYEAH when you get your subscription because they'll give you $10 off. All right, we're going on the ultimate drive. I have a magic scepter here on Cars Yeah, and this is what I can make happen for you, Alexis. You get to pick the car you're in. You get to pick who you're riding with. This could be somebody from the past, somebody who, who has passed, or somebody current, maybe even somebody in the future. No, no one's answered it that way. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, so you get to pick the car, the person, and who would be driving, and what would you be talking about? So let's go on your ultimate ride. Ah, so that's fun. Uh, all right. So I would say that I would love to drive on the Amalfi Coast in Italy. Oh. I've been to Italy. We've been to Italy a few times. We've yet to go to the Amalfi Coast. That would be what I would love to do. I mean, I, you know, driving along a coastline is always beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so that I'm sure would be tremendous. So, um, of course, I would want to be driving with my husband, Marcello, of course. Um, <laughs> if I had to choose the car, it's got to be a convertible, assuming, and I've got to have good weather, so you better make that happen. Ah, I can do anything. But, uh, the scepter's <laughs> magic here. So. That's right. Um, and uh, I guess, you know, something like, a, I don't know, like a late 60s Carmen Ghia or something like that, Ooh, you know. Okay. Very fun little cars. You know, I not it doesn't have to be uh, over the top there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, certainly my husband would be driving. Um, 
you know, I think that that's, I, I would be looking at the views too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, it's a, yeah, beautiful drive uh, with yeah. Marcello. Of course, Marcello, that would be pretty yes. cool. And I had a 67 Carmagia in high school up in, oh, the, I did. <laughs> yeah, up in the college and fun cars. Of course, I had to immediately take mine apart and modify it and put a bigger engine and, you know, and so forth. But uh, that sounds like a pretty darn nice drive. And of course, the Amalfi Coast. Those cars aren't terribly fast, but you know what? You don't need to be going fast. I don't want to go fast no. necessarily. Yeah, no, so. you want to enjoy the view. That would be awesome. Yeah. Well, you have taken us on a wonderful ride, wonderful drive, wonderful thoughts. You've you dropped so many value bombs for us. I wondered if you would drop one more and leave us with a parting word of wisdom or guidance before I let you go today. Okay, so now I can't use seeking first to understand because we already talked about it. Well, you can if you want. That you know, we can always go back to great advice. Right. You know, you know, um, Juan Garcia, who's our West Coast sales manager, said to me years ago, and I actually even printed it up and for for like years I had it on a bulletin board in my office. He said, um, the person who tells you they can't get done should get out of your way. <laughs> right. And I, I know that that comes from somebody else. And, and, uh, but it's, it's so true. You know, when, when you get that person who's sort of that naysayer, you sort yeah. of like just need to put the blinders on and just, you know, accomplish what you know you can. Um, so I, I think that's tremendous advice. But really, and that's something I live by, but what really I live by and what I try to teach my kids and, I'll say it to people when I when I interview them for a job and mm -hmm. I, I've said it to people when they're struggling at work and I say, you know, you want to leave the world or at least the situation you're in better than you found it. Mm. You know, and so when you walk away, and I, I believe I got that somewhere from Og Mandino, I think, you know, he wrote, didn't he write like greatest salesman in the world or something mm -hmm. like that? You know, and he talked about, you know, that person that you're engaged with, you know, what's what's going to happen to them after you walk away? And and you want to have left that situation, that person, that that bit of the world, you know, better than you found it. And I think that that's, you know, super important to me. Well, Alexis, you've done that today with the listeners here at Cars. Yeah, you have left us better than you found us with some wonderful pieces of advice and wisdom and inspiration. So I want to thank you for that. What are the ways people can learn more about Premier Financial Services? Oh, well, you can learn more about Premier by uh, checking out our website. Um, on our website, there are several videos uh, that explain what we do. But better than that, you can find videos and testimonials from our clients and uh, customers that'll tell you all about how it is to work with Premier. And I would recommend watching those videos. And those can be found on your website? You sure can find those on the website, but you could even go on to YouTube and look up Premier Financial Services and you'll find them. Very cool. I'll make sure I put links to all those on Alexis' show notes page. So just go to carsia.com, type in Alexis, and her last name, Ketchai, C-H-A-C-C-H-I-A. Just put Alexis in there. You'll find her. She's right there. You'll be able to find everything about Premier Financial Services. And remember, they can make your dreams come true. So check them out. Out. Alexis, thanks for being so generous today with your time and your expertise. Another big shout out to Gordon Andrew for bringing you to Cars Out. Thank you, Gordon. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thanks so much, Mark. Thank you. This has been fun. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!